everybody, welcome to this very special February issue of Staffing Monthly as we are digging into my favorite topic, sales and business development in spite or I guess in the spirit of the Staffing Sales Summit coming up here. Uh, we want to talk all things sales and I know we're, we've been giving a lot of run to some of the more traditional topics around sales like value selling and negotiation and sales funnels and all of this stuff, but I think that leads us to forget or maybe overlook one of the most important pieces of sales success as it relates to the salesperson, and that is compensation. And you'd be shocked to see how many different compensation plans there are in this industry, in this country. It's it's quite alarming, actually. Um, so I wanted to have a deep dive conversation with this, and I have somebody here that is an expert and I had the actually the privilege of speaking with Shannon Khan from SMK Consulting just briefly the other day, and we touched on this topic and her depth of knowledge around aligning compensation plans to the behaviors that you want your salespeople to take and ultimately the results that you want them to get was it was insightful. It was it was motivating. And I was like, Shannon, can you please come on and talk to our audience about this? Uh, she has had an amazing career. She has held some of the highest positions in the sales business development channel for some of the largest staffing companies in the country. Uh, so she's definitely been there, done that, knows exactly what she's talking about. And it is my distinct honor to welcome Shannon Kahn to Staffing Monthly. Shannon, thank you for being here. Well, thank you, Dan, for having me. I'm really excited to have this conversation with you and, and with your viewers. Awesome. So yeah, we were chatting the other day and we were talking all things, you know, staffing sales and we were talking about all these different things that are going to go on in the summit. And then we got on the topic of comp compensation and you made a comment to me about how aligned compensation plans drive behavior and misaligned compensation plans kind of stifle behavior. And I just... I want to know more about that. Like, what do you mean by that? Like, how are we get? How do we build a compensation plan to really get the results that we're looking for out of sales? Well, I, I think I'll go back to one comment you made too: is that there are so many different compensation plans in this industry. It's not standardized like some industries, and your compensation plan needs to align with your strategy first. <laughs> What are you trying to accomplish as an organization as far as your target market, your growth, and you know, what your focus is, and make sure that your compensation plans align with that and also with uh, the rest of the organization because sales doesn't operate in a vacuum. They work with recruiters, they work with operations, and so your, your compensation needs to align with those teams as well and not create division, mm. which is often what happens, or create internal competition. You have to remember the competition is outside the organization, not inside the organization. And I've seen in some cases where, where you create that kind of internal competition, that that really creates a, a lack of trust and a breakdown in uh, the effectiveness of your operation and, and how well you service your clients. And frankly, the clients see it as well. And, and they uh, may react to that. So I think uh, it, it can be in very, very impactful in a positive way and also very impactful in a negative way. So it's really important to get it right. So let's let's go a little bit more tactical. I know that it needs to align with a strategy, but can you just kind of give me you know one or two examples about the strategic goal of like what a company is trying to accomplish and then maybe how they should focus on aligning the comp plan to that? Okay. So I think if your your goal is to, for example, really accelerate your new logo business, for example, and you've maybe been stagnant in that area for a while. So you may look at um, uh, adding a piece to your existing compensation or paying more for new logos that are coming in. And, and that is going to refocus your team's effort on that versus just getting paid on existing business. Um, and so I think you have to balance the the new new business coming in and you don't want to lose the existing business. So if you just if you overcorrect, then you could um, uh, see your existing business decline while you're going after a new business. But strategically, if that is where you want to be, then you need to create some really specific um, uh, 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 compensation around incentives around that that are really attractive. Um, another example might be maybe there's a, a new product or new service that you're offering. And I had this example before where the salespeople were asked to go 
sell that, but there was no real incentive plan in place. So they were clear how they were being paid. So we created incentives around that business and how they could earn additional money around that. And all of a sudden it grew. Um, so it, that that was a direct correlation saying, hey, we really want to go this business. But without the salespeople having a clear understanding of how they're getting paid, they didn't have any incentive to go focus on that. It really is funny how uh, people, especially money motivated people, will figure out exactly how they make the money and then they will actually work to make it. Um, and yet yeah. a lot of leaders sometimes don't pay as close of attention to that mechanism of performance management as they should. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So really, that's that's basically you, you said something I thought was interesting about not overcorrecting. So almost just like layering on to say, hey, this is our standard compensation package, but we really we've got a strategic plan this year. We we need to expand new logos. So we're just going to layer this on this extra incentive maybe paying uh, an increased percentage of margin or revenue or whatever, or even just a, a fixed dollar amount spiff, if you will, for new logos coming in. Um, is that kind of iterative? And you can you can tweak that year to year based on your strategic goals. Is that how you see it? Yes, exactly. Um, it, because if you overcorrect and say, we're, we're just going to pay for um, you to go get new business and we're going to pay you for that. I've seen this before, too, for a couple of years and then you don't get paid anymore. Suddenly the existing business gets neglected and you can measure it and you can see that there's a decline over time of that existing business. So being cautious to say, we want to shift some of your time and your focus on this. So like you said, we're going to make a very generous um, spiff for new business when it hits a certain revenue threshold, or we're going to pay a higher percentage on that new business for a period of time, but we don't want to see this other business neglected. So we're going to continue to pay you either as is or a slightly lower percentage. Um, I would add to that though, anytime you're going to make changes to your compensation plan, one, make sure it's easy to understand. And two, make sure you can measure it. Make sure you can measure it because it's important for salespeople to be able to go find what they're gonna, how much they're gonna earn, to be able to go find the data on their own and not wait for someone to provide the data to them, that becomes very frustrating and demotivating for them. So again, in making sure it's something that if you create a really complicated plan that you have one they can't understand and two you can't measure, that becomes a negative as well. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. And when we were chatting the other day, you, you mentioned that they have to be able to figure it out on the back of a napkin, right? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, cocktail, that's why I use that terminology all the time is make it easy to figure out, make it easy to understand. Um, it, it goes back to trust. And, yeah. and if I don't understand how I'm getting paid, then I start to wonder if I should trust what how I'm being paid. So, um, and, and I think there's many ways in this industry to keep it simple and still get your folks focused on the right things. I would add something else that we, I don't know that we talked about the other day that I think is really important in, in your organization. If you don't already have a compensation philosophy, I'd recommend taking a little bit of time with your leadership team to say, how do we want to be viewed? How, does, how do we want our compensation plans to align with each other and with our, our uh, strategy? And things like, do we believe in caps or no caps? Do we believe that um, we should have accelerated uh, compensation for our high performers? Do we want to have a more of a team concept with, that you've implemented, for example? Um, how do we want to, our compensation philosophy to kind of be that foundation for all of our plans? So as we build plans, whether it's for recruiters, or operation and sales, we can kind of use that as our guidepost does it meet our philosophy? And it doesn't have to be complicated, but if you give some thought to that, then I think that will also give you some kind of um, benchmark and, and, and uh, touch point to, to refer back to as you're evaluating your plans or reviewing your plans. That that makes sense. And when the the image that that kind of popped in my head when you were talking about like overly complicated and confusing comp plans, it's like, have you ever bought uh, like maybe airline tickets from one of the budget airlines? And then it's like, okay, I'm going to buy it because the, the initial ticket price is really good. But then it's like, oh, I got to pay for my seat. And then I got to do this and I got to do this. And at the end, like it's this, you got to piece it all together. And at the end of the day, like sometimes the ticket might be the same, if not a little bit more, but because it's so confusing, you don't understand it, but you, you end up with this, this feeling of frustration. Yes. And I couldn't help but thinking that if we have confusing comp plans that our employees might feel a bit like that, like not just confused, but frustrated. 
you know? Yes, that, and, and there's too many components to measure that also can be very frustrating and um, distraction. It's just a distraction from them focusing on what you want them to focus on. And um, so I think, you know, there, as you're thinking about, you know, one thing people might be thinking is, you know, it's February, should I be looking at my comp plans right now? Um, and I think there's never a wrong time to do that. I think that if you feel like you're not getting the results you want, this is an area to take a look at. It may be that that's not the problem, but it could be some tweaks to that or changes to that um, could be really beneficial in, in refocusing your team. And I think it's really important, and you kind of mentioned this, is one, involve the team and ask yeah. them about, you know, the when you're thinking about redoing it, I would even ask them today, tell me what our compensation plan means to you. What do you believe you're being asked to do, both from an activity standpoint and from a results standpoint? So you kind of get that baseline of, is our plan... You might hear things like, well, it's really complicated, or I don't feel like it incents me to do the things that I can control, things like that. So I would say that's a really great first start. Just ask your folks. And then as you're rolling out anything new, there, there's often a fear of, gosh, a new plan is going to result in turnover and people are going to leave. I haven't seen that to be the case as yeah. long as it is communicated properly and they're involved in the process. Yeah, that makes sense. And it, it actually reminds me of a story from ages ago when I was a, a younger sales manager and I was, you know, involved with creating incentives to inspire the team. And on my team, there was this, the top producer, like the, this, this one guy that month in a month out would just lead the board. Like it was like clockwork. Like it just, it wasn't even like, basically everyone else was just fighting for the second spot. Like that, like that's really what it was. And I didn't like that. Like I wanted to create some some parity. I wanted to create, you know, some some changing. Like I wanted people to really think that they had a shot at the top spot. So I went out and I I put this incentive out there. And I was like, hey, when it was for one month, I noticed a trend in our data. I'm like, you know, we tend to like hit October and like however we do in October for some reason, it like would close the year out a certain way. So I'm like, October is the month I'm gonna spit. And I put out to the team, the entire team, I'm like, hey, whoever the top sales rep is in the month of October, you know, based on our criteria, is going to get an all expense paid vacation for two on the company. Like, we're going to send you something mm -hmm. really nice. We're going to pay for everything. And Shannon, at first it worked. When I reviewed the numbers in November, I'm like, wow, this worked. Like the same guy did not win the month. I'm like, this is amazing. We had a new person that, that was the leader of the board for the first time in a long time. Like, oh, this plan worked. But then as I dug a little bit deeper, I realized that nobody actually really did that much better. He just did worse. And mm -hmm. I called him in the office and I was like, hey, like, what's what's going on here? And uh, he was like, yeah, he's like, honestly, I don't really want to travel. He's like, I don't really like traveling. It's not my thing. So when you put that out there, he's like, I know, you know, other people like to travel more than I do. He's like, I like to just kind of hang around. He's a homebody, just a, you know, good, good dude, homebody. He wasn't a traveler. He's like, so he's like, I sandbagged. He's like, I just kind of took my foot off the gas and coasted uh, because I didn't want to win that trip. He's like, I just didn't want to go anywhere. And, Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And I was like, lesson learned. Like I should have just asked my team what they find the most interesting and it might've been motivating to them. And I picked travel because guess who really likes to travel? this guy, you know, so I picked, <laughs> yeah. so I picked what yeah. was important to me, but didn't actually ask the people. So to your point, it, it really, uh, it is important to, to ask your, your crew, you know, what incentives or what motivates them. Um, yeah, exactly. I want to, I want to get even more tactical. And I know that you said that there's not really a standard comp plan. And I, I see that there's so much variety mm -hmm. out there, but you've been around this a lot. You know, you, you consult with companies, you've held the highest position in companies. Like what, what do you believe, notwithstanding that it needs to be specifically aligned with the strategy, but just generally speaking, what do you believe is like the best framework for compensation? Is it a high base and lower commissions, lower based, high commissions, aligned with the sales team? Like just kind of in a perfect world, what do you think is like the best um, all around comp plan to motivate salespeople? Tough to say this. There's one, I think it depends on whether you're, you have people focused on enterprise accounts, which is a longer sales cycle. So you're going to need to go to a higher base, maybe a, a lower percentage. Um, whereas if you have business that's more of um, a quick turn, 
and, and a faster uh, sales cycle than I think going with a kind of, if you go too low, it's going to be hard to get people um, certainly, but um, to sort of admit and really give them some strong incentives and, and don't be afraid to let them make a lot of money <laughs> in this yeah. business. And it, it takes time for, for the, um, for reps to build their business, but over time, they're going to build um, a tremendous um, book of business and, you know, they, they will continue to grow year over year. So if you have that low base and high incentive, not too low, but lower, no, lower base, um, then they can see how year over year they can continue to grow and, and elevate their business. You know, one other thing, you know, a lot of times companies are very concerned about what, what about growth? I, I don't want yeah. to pay people the same amount year over year. And, and so we did in one case, um, we uh, introduced a growth component each year. So you, um, in order, there would be a, it was a, what we call a gross profit dollar floor. And so year over year, you would um, have this floor based on the previous year's results that once you go past that, then you start to earn your your um, commissions and each year that would change um, based on the previous year's results. So you just needed to do 10% more to make the same amount of money. Once you started getting beyond that, that's when you really started to accelerate your income. So I think there are ways to introduce that, um, kind of give leadership the confidence that what when somebody's been here two or three years, what's the incentive for them to continue to grow and build their business? Yeah, I've I've ran into that in my career with salespeople that would actually build up a pretty comfortable book of business where they have mm -hmm. probably the most generic compensation plan in the industry where they just get paid a flat percentage of their gross margin for perpetuity. And once they get to a certain level and they hit their personal comfort level, they do. They kind of they can take their foot off the gas and coast. And I used to have to to run the sales performance analysis both ways to say, hey, what is your overall book of business generating for the company, you know, and then what is the ROI based on, you know, our cost outlay to you, but then also what is it just year to date? Like, I want to see, like, what have you actually produced this year? And then you kind of map that against prior years to so see what the growth is, is stagnating. So I, that's a, that's a good point, but I, I want to go back to, to something you said about this growth floor. So I really want to understand this. I, I've heard this concept. I've not personally uh, worked in or been around this compensation plan very much. Um, if you have a company, and let's just say it's a um, a fifty million dollar staffing company, and let's say that they do roughly ten million of gross margin, just kind of twenty percent gross margins. Um, they do twenty. They do ten million of gross margin. Are you saying that like you would say, hey, we're not gonna. This is what we did this year. Next year, we're not gonna pay commission on the first ten million. We're only gonna pay a really high percentage of gross margin commission on anything above. 10 million is that am i understanding that right um just a modified version of that so it was done on an individual basis so let's say a rep okay. did 5 million in revenue and a million in gross profit dollars so mm -hmm. you have to factor in seasonality because in sure. most industries there's going to be some seasonality so it's not fair to flatten it out over 12 months but let's say you know that's you know let's say it's um 100,000 gross profit dollars per month or whatever uh then you'd say for the previous year, um, we're going to set a, a gross profit dollar floor of, say, 20000 And then once you hit that 20000 is when you start to earn um, revenue. Um, and so not over the entire amount, because that would that would be very discouraging. Yeah. But there is, it, it's really what do we expect you to grow? And that's say 10 percent. So take 10 percent of that and that becomes your gross profit floor. And then they start earning that monthly commission on top of that. And then I think also providing some accelerators because highly motivated um, reps like to know that if I exceed the expectations that I can even earn more. Yeah. So you, you say um, just for rough numbers, let's say it's 20,000 and then they bring in a hundred and, you know, a uh, hundred thousand, they're going to start, they're going to get paid at 80. So then if they grow that hundred thousand to 120 and 150, then they're going to get paid on everything minus the 20,000, but that would be adjusted for seasonality throughout the year. It's a little bit more of a complexity and I would use it for more um, tenured experienced folks who are starting to hit those five, 10, 15, $20 million 
payout that you want to make sure that they continue to um, grow year over year. Do you think, what do you, so in, in the spirit of that, what do you think about the concept of, and this would be probably someone that's been in a company for two or three years at least, but that same concept to say, hey, January of 2023, you did $20,000 of gross profit. So that's the floor. So January of 2024, anything above 20,000, we're going to pay this. And then February, this is what you did February of last year to almost create that, like you're competing with yourself last year that builds in your seasonality, but you're literally looking at it month to month and paying commission on the, the monthly gross profit. Is that my like, you know, I think that becomes that that would be a very, um, you'd have to pay a really high percentage of the amount over the 20,000 in this industry to, to make sure that their earnings, um, were consistent for the same for um, similar production or higher production. If you didn't pay anything on that first twenty, I think that would be a really risky proposition for the reps. You'd have to pay significantly higher on everything above. So what you would say is that, that twenty thousand, I want you to grow by ten percent minimum. So that's twenty two thousand. After the two thousand is when I start paying you. Mm. So there, there is still a growth component, but boy, if you said I'm not going to pay on anything until you hit last year's numbers, that becomes a very much more of a high risk environment. And um, uh, again, you might have to pay twenty percent of everything above that to make it worthwhile for them. Sure, that's interesting. That's interesting. What I now one of the concepts we talked about earlier as well was like the silos or the vacuums that kind mm -hmm. of like the industry and create some uh, kind of a divisive nature. Um, what is your thought on that? Like, how do you feel about salespeople commission versus recruiter commission and all of that? Like, and what about, what about the non-revenue generating people, of the company, like your back office administration people, like, do they, should they get commissioned on stuff? Like, what, what are your thoughts around how to manage commission across the organization? Yeah, um, I, I think uh, it's unusual to pay everybody the same. And I know that that is an example. It can work. I think that you have to be careful to think that compensation is going to solve for culture issues and management issues. So it is part of uh, your growth strategy. But if you um, are relying on that too much for your culture, then that becomes problematic. So you, you build a culture of teamwork and you know, a lot of recruiters and operations people don't want to have to go out and get new business. So um, if you're a new business development person and you're um, able to go out and bring new business in to be a rainmaker, that's that's a big, important role to play. And and typically in most organizations in and outside of staffing, that pays higher. Um, and what I've seen is most recruiters and operations people are fine. If I don't have to go out and get in, in cold call, I'm okay with a different comp plan. Although I'd also say would say in certain niches like um, financial services and technology, the recruiter plays an incredibly re important role and, and often their compensation will be very similar to or the same or more than salespeople in that organization, or especially if they run a full desk. So I think it really depends, it goes back to what's your strategy, what's your niche, what's that sales cycle, um, how uh, how do you, what's your philosophy on how to pay salespeople? And uh, all of that kind of goes into determining what that looks like. I do like team incentives. I'll tell you a quick story. It's a really good one that we, uh, during the recession back in 2008-9, we as an organization had a, a leadership meeting and we said, gosh, based on everybody's projections, we're going to do 96 million this year. And I was like, we can't get that close to 100 million and not to 100 yeah, million. Yeah, right. Crazy. So You so think like started, me, Shannon. You think like yeah. me. <laughs> I was like, you guys, we can't do this. So then we started to talk about, well, okay, then we said, let's create a contest. Contests are great, but if contests are set up in a way that you have winners and losers. If you think you're not going to win, you stop trying. Yeah. So you have to be careful. So we, what we did is we created a contest that said, if we hit a hundred million, everyone in the company is going to get a hundred bucks in a jacket. Okay. So it's called the drive to a hundred million. Well, we did 101 million in change. <laughs> And I just love that story because everybody won and everybody kept trying up to the end because it wasn't like, okay, branch over here won and I didn't. So yeah, I'm out. Um, everybody kept pushing and we would provide 
uh, we, you know, marketing created a really cool uh, visual for each of the offices. And, you know, we had weekly updates and how we were doing relative to the goal. And it was just a really, really good example, I think, of bringing the entire organization together towards a goal. Now, you wouldn't repeat that every year. Right. But for that period of time when things were really difficult, um, I think it proved the, the impact that you can have when you create a team goal and then make sure everybody knows how we're doing against that goal over time. Okay. So I like it. So we've talked about kind of base salary commission, even talked about layering some incentives to align with strategic. And now we've talked about contests, you know, and kind of incentives are based on that. Are there any other components to compensation uh, not not benefit, not health insurance and that stuff that I know is a, is an important piece of it, but any other monetary components of compensation that that you're aware of or you think are interesting that that people should be paying more attention to? Um, I think that's a good question. I think your um your example that you had about incentive trips, yeah, I think um there are people that love them and uh, are recognition oriented that are looking at that and how can I make it? And there are others that oh, I've been there, done that. I don't really want to go against, but they have a tremendous way of, uh, I think, getting people excited. And I would say it's about the recognition and that it, I, if you're going to do an incentive trip, I would make sure it includes everyone in the organization so that you can recognize your recruiters. You can recognize your operations people. People remember those trips if and yeah. they want to uh, and and they want to be able to qualify again and again and i think in thinking about um you know i give you that example of the the uh um end of the year that wasn't a very expensive thing but everybody was excited to be on a winning team yeah so, and i think recognition has a huge part in compensation and it could be something as, you know, it could be plaques. It could be um, like you created this, you know, monthly re reward. I would not, I would say, make sure you're thinking about that. Salespeople typically, and, and, and a lot of folks are very recognition driven. Yeah. Um, and so make sure you've got something in your uh, organization and some kind of plan that includes that. Um, and I think that that also can be very, very impactful. Um, you know, so not everybody cares about that, but if you have a variety of different ways of acknowledging and recognizing people, then I think that can be, um, well-received. Yeah. It's, that's actually a really good component too, is tying it to recognition. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think that is a, that is a good one. I, I like those, those points you shared. Is there any, anything else I'm missing that you want to share on this topic, uh, around compensation or really motivating the salespeople? Yeah, I, I think to just don't be afraid to ask them, um, you know, one, how is our current plan in, um, working to incentivize you for growth? And um, how, what else could we do that would give you more incentive growth? So I think involving your teams in this conversation, it doesn't mean they get to design the plan, um, right. but it, it means that they're part of the conversation. So I think that should be something you know, I've seen organizations that they they create the plans in a silo and they send them out there and and you know they, there's a lot of trepidation, there's a lot of concern around that. So I think that that would be something to to do. I think the the good part of this industry is you can be creative, you can come up with something unique. If you're in the real estate business, there's pretty much one or two different ways to pay people in real estate sales, but in this industry. It's really um, that the ability to pay very different ways can uh, differentiate you from the competition. And I think I also don't, I would say, try and seek out what others are doing um, and always think about, OK, if I, if I create this incentive plan, it's going to drive these behaviors. What behaviors is it going to disincent? And are we yeah. OK with that? Yeah. What are, are the unintended okay consequences? That? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, so that you have conversations around that or ways to mitigate that as well. I like that. And I, and I know that you and I are going to collaborate on a couple of cool things we've got. We're planning a, a webinar in the works to talk deeper on this and, and an in-person workshop for uh, a National Independent Staffing Association session. So 
maybe almost literally a hands-on, you know, compensation roundtable to talk about. Let's let's review that. What are your strategic initiatives, and how can we actually, you know, realign the compensation plan to that so people mm -hmm. can literally leave that, you know, session with a with a more aligned and more functional compensation plan. Because that's probably a little bit of what you do in your role as a fractional chief sales officer, right? You probably help yes. companies with that. Okay. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. cool. Well, I'm excited to share that. Uh, and I will we'll share additional information for anybody that wants to participate in those. Uh, Shannon, if anybody wants to, you know, reach out to you and learn more about what we talked about compensation structures, or maybe even share specifically what their strategic plan is, and, and maybe get your opinion on how to best align a compensation plan to motivate people to achieve it. What's the best way to connect with you? LinkedIn is actually um, probably the the most immediate and fastest way to reach me, and I'm I'm uh, I respond very quickly. So send me a message on LinkedIn, and I will respond very quickly. I would absolutely welcome the opportunity to, to talk with the uh, folks about this. It's an, something I feel um, is important and and something it's a. Uh, um, near and dear to me. So would love to have more conversations and look forward to more conversations, more conversations with you, Dan. Awesome. And we'll make sure we get your LinkedIn link right here on page as well as your website and any other pertinent information you want to share. So Shannon, thank you so much for being here today. And I look forward to working with you in the near future. Sounds good. Thanks, Dan. Have a good day.